Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Do you want to become insanely successful? Do you want to be the go-to guru in your industry? Do you want to be talked about for all the right reasons? For over 40 years, Kevin Harrington has helped people just like you become significant influencers. Now he's broken the process down in the key person of influence roadmap, and it's yours for free. Just text KPI to him at 727-888-2100. Text KPI to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free step-by-step guide. Text KPI to 727-888-2100 to get the recognition you deserve and experience the success as the go-to voice everyone listens to in your industry today. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. Today, I have the good fortune to be joined by someone who is entering a rarefied number, a very small number of guests who've been asked to come back to the Sharkpreneur twice. That is none other than David Wood. David Wood. Yes, he started life as a consulting actuary to Fortune 100 companies, grew the world's largest coaching business, becoming number one on Google for life coaching, which we talked about last time he was on the show. Today, we're going to talk about something different. We're going to talk about the tough conversations we avoid that are our doorways to confidence, success, and even love in both work and life. David, we're going to hear about coaches, high-performing entrepreneurs, executives, teams, even prison inmates to amazing results and connection one conversation at a time. He's appeared on CNN, uh, spoken at Columbia University, appeared obviously on the Sharkpreneur podcast, John Lee Dumas, Entrepreneur on Fire podcast, Conscious Millionaire, and many, many others. David, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. We're happy to have you back. So wherever we last left off, you had built the number one life coaching business basically in the world and then had moved on from that. And now you are coaching around individually, um, companies, teams, CEOs on the tough conversations. Talk a little bit about what your latest transition. Yeah. You know, I, I started years ago, like back in 1997, I started having tough conversations because I did a personal growth program and they were really big on cleaning up the past. So I, I'd have to make, I, I do conversations you, you, you might not believe. I had to write down anyone I was upset with, anyone I resented, anyone I felt guilty about hurting. And they wanted me to call bullies from high school or wow. the, the, the girl who broke my heart twice at age 15. And I said, no, <laughs> I'm not having that conversation. And you know, it took a lot of coaching, but eventually I managed to find my courage and I went and took a risk. And I went and spoke to people I would have thought I could never speak to. And I would have those tough conversations with them. And I got to feel better about myself. I got to be more connected with them. I felt transformed. And then sometimes when you do it in the work environment or for your business, you get amazing results. Like tough conversations are where amazing results live. And we, I grew up a chicken because I wasn't taught to go and have tough conversations. I, I grew up in an Australian town. You sweep stuff under the carpet and you don't talk about it. But I'm here now as an evangelist to say, if you're willing to lean in and be uncomfortable and take a risk and be vulnerable, you can have amazing results for yourself and for your business and family. Wow. So the, you are absolutely right. I have had a few of those just popped into my mind right now. On, on, on the personal side. So you want to give an example? I mean, let's make this real. I'm curious. Sure. All right. So we're, uh, we're putting me on the couch. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, so I had, I'll give you one I had a number of years ago, but le- within the last five or ten, five years, maybe. Um, so I only knew um, on my mother's side of the family, I only knew my step-grandfather. Um, he married my grandmother before I was born. 
and he was grandpa to me my entire life. And neither my mother nor my grandmother talked about my biological grandfather or my mother's biological father. Um, and did some digging, asked some questions. Um, my mother had a sob story about how, how, whatever her mother had told her about who this guy was um, and whatever relationship they didn't have and whatever the reasons were for that. And of course it was all his fault. Um, and do you know anything about him? Have you heard, does he know why you had kids? Does he know I exist? Like, does he know my brother exists? Any of this stuff? Um, I decided kind of at the inspiration of my wife, um, cause I heard he was getting on in years and I found a phone number, did some digging, uh, picked up the phone and got his fifth wife on the phone. Apparently he had remarried quite a few times and explained who I was and could hear her shock. Uh, but she had apparently been told that I existed and who I was. Um, and then she got him on the phone and I had to repeat myself a couple of times, older, hard of hearing. And finally I get through to him. I'm your long lost grandson from, you know, your estranged daughter. Um, who you haven't spoken to in more than like 30, 20, 30 years. Um, he started crying. It became, a, I started crying. It became a very emotional conversation. Oh. Um, he said, you know, oh my God, you've added 10 years to my life. Um, I've always wanted to know, always wanted to reach out, but I was told not to. He told a slightly different story than my mother and my grandmother had told me. Right. Um, and then, you know what, this was actually, this was probably... 11 years ago because for my son's first birthday, who's now 12, um, he wasn't old enough to remember it, but my wife and I took him to Disney and we stopped by and met in person, my long lost grandfather. Um, he got to meet my wife. He got to meet his great grandson. Wow. Um, we met his fifth wife and very emotional releasing visit of releasing tension i didn't wasn't even aware you know that i had around this topic i had just assumed like it said accepted that's just the way it is that's right. the story i've heard it must be true we just don't talk to him don't know anything about him any of this and my wife said you know she was the inspiration going when she did when we were dating and getting married and learning about each other and our histories and she said are you sure that's true do you really know or could there be another side of that story I said, yeah. I don't know. So well, that's when I started firstly, asking my mother questions. Well, firstly, I want to acknowledge your courage because I imagine that 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 would be a terrifying call to make. It was less ter. I, okay, so I was a little bit nervous right. um, because I didn't. Other than, uh, hey, is he the negative person they've made him out to be, and is he going to reject this phone call, or are we going to have some type of productive conversation? It was probably the only thing I would worry about. Was worried about. Now, when you were mentioning how you were forced to go call bullies from high school, um, the bully who tormented me in middle school for years immediately popped into my head. Um, I have found him since on Facebook, but and will occasionally look at his newsfeed, but have not reached out, have not made a phone call, um, have harbored a lifelong fantasy of getting revenge. Yes. Um, and yes. the interesting thing is we had a client who wrote a book on bullying and in the research for that book that we did for him, I learned a ton about, oh my God, nobody bullies for no reason. What must his home life have been like if right. he thought that was okay to express his anger that way? So I've gotten some, I've let some of it go in terms of some empathy, in terms of he was probably hurting more than you were if he felt the need to do that. Um, wow. But still have the fantasy of, now that I am an adult and able and, and a, uh, uh, you know, a black belt martial artist and able to defend myself, going to his city in another state, sneaking up on him, tapping him on the shoulder when he turns around, punching him in the face. <laughs> yes. Well, that's, that's a valid approach too. You know, I'm probably right? not going to do that one because I have some licenses from different industries that if I didn't have like a ski mask on and didn't escape um, unknown – um, I could lose for being in a legal proceeding. So yeah. it's not worth the risk to me. Well, I want to emphasize a couple of points that, that 
I think could be highlighted here. One is you talked about with the bully and with your grandfather, that there could be another side to the story. Now we tend to live in our own world. So when I'm having a tough conversation, I think I know how it is and, and it's tough in my world. I, I'm not usually open to the, the other person might have a totally different story. Like that bully might have had a horrible home life or my grandfather might have been told not to reach out to me yes. and he thinks he's doing the right thing. So that's one of the beautiful things that can come out of a tough conversation is you can get connected and understand each other's worlds. The other thing that I got from, from hearing your story is the reason we avoid a tough conversation is because our mind presents us with the risks. Mind's good at that. So the mind might say, I'm not calling my grandfather. He might tell me to bugger off. I might find out he's not interested. So I'm not going to feel very worthy, right? Those, those risks are quite apparent. I'm going to feel awkward. I'm not going to know what to say. The mind will tell you all of that. What the mind often won't tell you is the potential upside. The mind often won't present to you, you know, you might be able to release a bunch of tension you didn't even know you had. You might get really connected. You might make a difference to someone else's life. You might feel more expressed and more powerful in your life. There's so much that comes out of it. And my job is to, I think, help open eyes a little more so that you can weigh up the risks that you're already clear about with the gain that you may not be clear about and you can make a decision. Does it look like there's a profit in this tough conversation? In my experience, nine times out of 10, there's a profit and it's worth the risk for the potential gain. Every now and then, no, I won't have that conversation. It doesn't look like it's actually gonna be profitable, but we're sweeping too many under the carpet and it's time to bring them back out and screw up a little bit of courage so we can have the wonderful gains. Wow. Okay. So I am trying to be fully present and hear what you are saying when, of course, my mind is racing with um, everything that we already just talked about. So you are now, you have the, I don't want you to spill the secret sauce, obviously, but you have nine tough conversations of powerful leadership. Can you just give us an example of, let's say, one or two so that our listeners and our viewers get an idea of the amazing process that you can take them through. Yeah. So one practice, which is a tough conversation of leaders is uh, reveals. So we tend as humans to hide things, particularly if we think it's going to be perceived negatively, but um, let's say your company's been taken over and everyone's a bit worried you might reveal to your staff, you know what? I share some of that worry. The future's uncertain, but I'm here with you and we're gonna get through it together. That would be an example of a tough conversation where you're revealing the truth to someone. In a, in a personal setting, if you've got a confession to reveal to your partner or your child or a parent or someone, that's a reveal as well hey, I want to reveal this, and that's a tough conversation. Um, another example of one of the tough conversations of leadership is holding people accountable. You said you'd do this. You said you'd be here at five o'clock. You're not. That report was three days late. You told me you were going to fire that person. You haven't. So holding others accountable is another example of, okay, a, of so a tough I conversation. That's so how do you do that? And obviously we're going to give them enough to get excited about uh, learning more from you. How do you do that in such a way? I don't know if elegant is the word where they don't feel attacked, where they feel like, um, like, let's say it's a conversation. Let's you gave the example of punctuality. So let's say you have someone who is regularly late yeah. and you've, uh, you, you've, brought it up multiple times and it still isn't turning into showing up on time and you don't want to fire a person over it. You don't want to, I, I don't disciplinary action. How do you get someone to go? I don't know. How do I get the underlying motivation of, Oh my God, I guess I should actually show up on time. Yeah. Great question. So 
I have a four step blueprint that makes it way easier to have conversations like this. And if you like, we can give listeners, um, they can download that would be amazing website. selfishly i want it for myself but yes our yeah. listeners should get it too it's awesome there's a worksheet so you can prep before and get yourself ready like what am i hoping to gain out of this yes. what am i afraid might happen and you get to preempt a lot do i have a request that i'm not just dumping it on someone but i'm actually asking for something here so you do the worksheet and then i'll take you quickly through the four steps and we'll use this as an example someone's late and you want to hold them accountable Step one, you ask permission to have the conversation. Don't just launch into attacking them. Say, hey, can we talk uh, for a few minutes about something that's been bugging me? And this is where you slip in your hope from the worksheet. My hope is that we'll work together better as a team. Or my hope is that I can, I can stop uh, worrying about this and just focus better on my work, whatever it is. But you get permission now might not be a good time for them to talk about it. But usually people will say yes. You give them, give them a reason to say yes. And then step two, uh, you might share your fear or concern. This is an optional step. It might be something like, you know, I hesitate to bring it up because it's not a huge thing and uh, I don't want to make you defensive. Um, but I think it's worth it because I think it can make a difference to, to how we work as a team. And then step three, you share the issue. Now with this one, this is a good one because someone's late. So here's how not to do it. You're constantly late. You're late every time and you're messing up the operation of the team, right? I'm making universal statements here and that's, that's arguable. And so you can start getting into argument and feel attacked. Better to focus on I statements using ownership language. So I might share the impact it has. When you're late, let's say two minutes or five minutes, I feel disempowered. And I start wondering if other people are gonna start coming late. And uh, that's five minutes of my time out of the day that's gone. And I think it would send a much stronger message to our team if all of us are, are, are right on time. And my request, is that you be on time for every meeting for the next 30 days and we see how it goes. I'm making this up off the top of my head. It's step beautiful. Step, great. Step You've obviously four, done it before. <laughs> I've had a lot of practice. Step four is where you get curious because we don't want to have tough monologues. We want to have tough conversations. So this is where we open up to our grandfather's world. Like, what's it like for him? We open up to our bully's world. This is where I might say something like, I'm curious, how is it to hear that for you? I know if it was me, I might feel a little bit defensive. How is it to hear that? And what do you think? Do you have a better idea or another way we could do it? I'd really like to know what you think. And then you shut up and you listen. This is where you get relational. You might even negotiate. They might have something better than you'd ever, ever even thought of. How's that? That is absolutely beautiful, and a you've got my you've got my interest. Um, I'm sure you have our listeners as well. Um, you mentioned where we could go to consume more of this, more of these resources from you. Where can we send our folks, and what are they going to find when they get there? Great. Uh, go to playforreal .life, playforreal .life, and three things I'd invite you to do. One, you can download this four step blueprint for free. Just put in your email address. Secondly, my podcast is now live. I've, I'm following in Seth's footsteps. And if you'd like to listen to me as well as, as well as Seth, it's called Tough Conversations with David Wood, and you can subscribe at the website. And the third thing is if something resonates with you in this interview and you'd like to see if you qualify for a free discovery session with me to create a plan for your life and career, go and see if you qualify. And if you do, I won't charge you for that. It's how I find the right people to work with long term. Again, that's playforreal.life. All right. That is it. It's been incredible. It, even if, if no, none of our 150,000 listeners listens to this and I'm the only one, it was worth it to me. I am sure they will listen. Um, absolutely incredible episode. I feel like I got a free session. 
Um, so send me a bill for that. Um, and we'll send everybody go to playforreal.life and make sure you take advantage of those amazing offers. David, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure, man. This is one of my most fun interviews yet. Thank you. Wow. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks everybody for watching or listening and we'll talk to you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.